it puts you in the central encampment, which is a little further in. I want to see Marithra at the at the very start. So we're we're gonna be lazy about this. And um, we're going to We're gonna take a flight path. And then I can get to talk about BlizzCon. Because I haven't talked about BlizzCon. So I was at BlizzCon. Um hello. Can you move so I can please go to the place, please? Thank you. The aspects have returned. Um, so we can fly Shacy Sanctuary. I mean, it's not that long of a flight. We'll see how fast we can talk about it. So yes, I went to BlizzCon. I came back on Monday evening. I was here, here Tuesday and waiting for to be able to get in and play. And I've been able to. Um, I don't, I'm still processing a lot of it. Like last night I was lying in bed. I'm like, did I actually fly to California to go? <laughs> oh my god. Why does it seem like it didn't happen? Um, and I mean, I'm going to talk about the conference person and I'll talk about my feelings about the, the new expansions. But uh, my, yeah, well, you know what? They usually say start with the positive before you give negative. I'm going to do this in reverse order because I want to leave this, this little reflection um, of the positive spin because I did have a good experience. Uh, first of all, there were a lot of complaints about it being too expensive. Portal Pass, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I heard people complaining about it afterwards and what they got and what they didn't get, and it just wasn't worth it. Um, access to a lounge, which may or may not get you into the uh, opening ceremony, you, that wasn't guaranteed. Just seemed a little... Ugh. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pay that. I didn't. And what I did pay was the two ninety nine. It's cheaper than any other conference. I'm going to another conference in March that the reduced rate is five hundred dollars. Now my job is paying that, so it's not coming out of my pocket, so it's technically free for me. But that's two hundred ninety nine is not a lot for a conference. And I know I know it's a lot for a lot of people and I'm lucky enough to be able to afford that and I feel bad for anyone who can't. Uh because I'll get to why I, I think if you're a fan of this game um, or these games and you, all you're seeing is negativity, it's a, just it's a good way to get there and see what it's actually like. Um, so first off, Overwatch had two rooms. Overwatch did not need two rooms. Overwatch 1 and over had its own room. Overwatch 2 had its own room. I realize I don't play the game, so maybe I'm a little biased and I'm seeing, and I'm, you know, I'm experiencing this. Hey, 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 Kelsa. So, yeah, I mean, but they did not need a room to itself. Diablo, while they didn't really have much to announce, had an amazing room, and they had, like, the book signings in there, and they had other things in there, and so it, it served the purpose of being for other, other things. Overwatch rooms, I don't know, I just walked past them quickly because I really had no interest. Uh, it's not a game I play, but what I could tell you is those rooms did seem pretty sparse. I mean, because they had the room, not as sparse compared to, let's say, the Warcraft room, which was, a, a lot of people have said that the Dark Moon Fair should have had its own room. I agree. Uh, that was the worst and the most chaotic and impossible if you wanted to go get experience. I didn't get... I basically, when I saw a line that looked like it was more than five minutes, like more than five or ten minutes, I didn't even bother. <laughs> My feet were hurting. I wore the wrong shoes. I had blisters. Also, hi. You get more days at New, yeah, New York Comic Con, but you know, you know, I'm going to be honest about New York Comic Con. Um, the crowd at BlizzCon was not as bad as New York Comic Con. New York Comic Con, I. I, you know, when I got tired and needed to get away at, at BlizzCon, it was because my feet were fucking hurting me because they were bleeding. And and I was like, I don't feel like standing on the line. I'm like, I'm tired. I, you know, well, I don't even know what this line is. You know, Dark Moon Fair tokens. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go home because Dark Moon fans this weekend and I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to the one in the game and I'll get my satisfaction that way. Um... Uh, the quiet room was, and supposedly come supposedly BlizzCon had a quiet room too. I never needed to go to it because I could go outside and sit down outside and just chill out there. Uh, and it was fine. I mean, even the first day where the line to get into the opening ceremony was crazy. I didn't even think I was going to get into the opening ceremony. But 
what turns out is if you had your registration from the day before, which I'm very glad I did, is they took like everyone that was already registered and they grabbed them like, go. No. And they just like corralled us into the, now granted, I had to run up several flights of stairs as it was starting. That was not fun. It kind of reminded me of seeing uh, Be More Chill with Anna and running up five flights of stairs. I had that same sort of feeling uh, <laughs> because she had to go to the bathroom, which was an additional flight. Um, no one else listening to this knows who the hell Anna is, but she's a friend who was notoriously late for any Broadway show. And I love you, Anna, if you ever hear this in the future. Um, but the thing was, is that it meant that you were always running up several stairs. And, and Kelson, who has seen many a show with <laughs> more than I can count at this point, is also very familiar with the theater Be More Chill played in. That was that was one. And it was it. No, it is. It's the um, no, it's not the lyric. It's the um, Orpheum. Whatever it is, it's the worst. That's all you need to know. Is it the some of those old theaters? I don't know how these like people from like you know the 19th century used to run up those stairs, but my God, yeah, I think it's Orpheum. It's Orpheum with lyric. I don't remember, but but it is it is not good. It's bad. Beautiful like wood panel walls in the theater. The theater is gorgeous, but those stairs are from hell. Those stairs are from hell. Um, it, it's the type of punishment that we given to like some gym instructor in hell is like you'll walk the everlasting stairmaster. Um, then see see a bad play. Sorry. Uh, no, we've seen good things in that theater too, but it's a uh, lyceum. And it was I knew it was some thing that was maybe possibly Greek. <laughs> That's Roman. That's Latin, isn't it? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I got so distracted. So anyway, that's how I felt when I got to the open ceremony. But I got to be in that opening ceremony, which, yeah, close enough, yeah. <laughs> um, I got to be in the opening ceremony. Uh, now, mind you, I only got to see a sliver of the actual stage live from the corner I was in, but I'm not about to complain. There were large screens up. So I got to, you know, I, I got to be in the room when things happened. So like, you know, like I wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I mean, the Diablo thing was like, yeah, okay, not much is happening there. Um, Overwatch, yeah, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. I like what they're doing. It's just not my type of, first person shooter is not my game. Um, it hasn't been since like Asteroids or, or Centipede. Okay. And that's not even really first person shooter. It just isn't. And, uh. Though I like, I mean, I, I appreciate it and like, I have nothing against Overwatch or people who play Overwatch. It's just, it's just not, I can't get into it. Uh, but yeah, so they had those, that was like, fine, okay, new hero. I have no idea what that means, but cool. Uh, <laughs> that, that was pretty much it. And then, you know, they, they started to go into the Warcraft stuff. And it was funny because at that point you knew they were saving what, they were saving it for last. They were saving the next expansion for last. Um, and... You know, they talked about Warcraft Rumble, which I have to say, I, I am convinced they released it when they did because, A, they knew people would be online at BlizzCon. They needed something to do. And also they knew people, if on launch day of this patch, they knew people were going to be waiting and needed something to do. And the one thing that was working perfectly fine was Warcraft Rumble. And I'm not going to lie, I, I've had a lot of fun with it, um, especially when I realized I was like, okay, I, I get what's, I get how you play this. It's, it's fun. It's kind of, you know, I know there's already a style of game like this, but it also kind of plays homage to uh, its uh, real time strategy past uh, in which you're building units and you're mining for gold. I'm like, oh, OK, uh, I, I except, you know, you didn't have gnolls to mine for gold, not gnolls, uh, kobolds to mine for gold, but it's fine. Um, your miners a cobalt, uh, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's got you know, some, uh, Jane is leading my party um, of what is a black drake and um, Defias Brotherhood and two fire elementals because I'm nothing if not predictable. <laughs> yeah, it needs internet. That's the only thing that's upsetting about it is that it you have to be online for it. Uh, otherwise, I'd be like, I would, 
I would be playing this all the time. It's going to be my thing to do at the laundromat when I when I'm too tired to read a book. Um, which, by the way, uh, War of the Scaleborn is excellent so far. I haven't read so much. I got it signed uh, by Courtney Almeida, um, who was lovely. And uh, and I'm going to put it this way. I don't want to spoil anything about the book. It's obvious what it's about. But it's the most I've read from Neltharian's perspective at a point in time of where things are just starting to change. So it's it's really interesting in that way um because you hear a lot and you hear a lot about i'm getting so sidetracked from my discuss sidetracked sidetracked from my discussion of blizzcon but i do want to talk about this it's tangentially related it, it's normally briefly but it's kind of neat to see the neltharian that's referred to in passing in dragonflight which i kind of hoped we had gotten to see more of and we might still if one thing I heard is correct uh, about the nature of the dream, uh, I hope I didn't give anything away, but I think we heard lots of references to how Neltharian used to be. Um, and, but never really got to see it. You see like in Abris, you know, spoils if you haven't seen it yet, uh, but new raid next week. So I don't feel like I, I should hold it, hold to this. You know, the, the, the Neltharian you see in Abris is a faceless one. It's not... Try, tries its best to come off as, but kind of gives it up right away. Of course, one one of the brothers picks up on it pretty soon, and the other one's like, no. He doesn't pick it up at all. and just sucks up. It's kind of funny in hindsight. I'm going to miss that raid. <laughs> anyway. Um... I, yeah, you, you 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 can forget which is which. So, um, but yeah, it's really it gives a really gives a whole bunch of like Virenoth point of view, Alex Strauss's point of view, and Neltharian's point of view, and Aridacron's point of view, and uh, and it's really kind of cool that they have that. I'm not want to give too much. Away. I'm not that far into it, but I don't want to give too much away because it is definitely worth it and it's really cool. And it was my plane reading. I got it the day before the plane trip, and I flew it there. And I flew it there. I read it while flying there. Uh, got it signed. Uh, and, and Courtney, I was like, I don't want to lose my page. It's my plane reading, and she says, I got post-its for that. So I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> you prepared. Uh, so this posted in there that she gave me, uh, and uh, it's cool. It's just a cool thing. On that line, because you know the folks that are getting the book signed, unless I guess they're art books, but the people that are getting like exploring Azeroth Pandaria, which I got signed by one of the artists who I had a great conversation with. Um, but and I, more on that in a second. Uh, the people on the line were lore nerds, so you know conversations were very easy to have there for me at least because you know i can't talk to like the esports people because i'm like like i don't eat and sleep and drink for the first two days until we absolutely crush this raid at mythic plus myth there is no mythic plus level raid that tells you how much i know mythic <laughs> mythic level and then we don't play the expansion ever again um i not my lane <laughs> not my you know but that's different way of playing the game uh as different as can get for me but um whereas i'm like i need to run this thing multiple times so i actually catch every single bit of dialogue <laughs> this is why i can never do mythic plus people would kill me like no i have to hear this part but uh don't worry i will be actually playing the game um told you the uh it was in uh on our planes this week. Uh, so is Farak, I think. Speak. I think Farak's here too. Yep, there, there's Farak. Farak's all over the place this week. Um, but so yeah, so I got the book signed. Uh, I did get to walk into the Dark Moon Fair one day, but then the next day I was like, I can't deal with it. The second day was worse than the than the first. But the coolest thing, even though you know social anxiety had the better of me, and um I I it was difficult to just strike up conversations. There were just 
the ease with which those conversations would happen when they did, um, you know, was really great. I mean, it's so weird to kind of, you like this thing, you love this thing, especially if you know way too much about it and have been playing for it for a long time. Um, normally doesn't come into your everyday conversation. I, I remember going back, this is shit, this was during Pandaria. I remember when I was playing, um, when Pandaria was out, a friend of a friend, um, I was visiting, I was visiting my friend in Vermont. Uh, they were here to visit their mom. So I went to go visit them in Vermont and, you know, they have a friend that, I mean, I know, I know her. So, but I wouldn't say she was a friend of mine cause we didn't really like keep in touch outside of that. Anyway, we were kind of like talking about, I forget how it came up and I, I, I alluded to it, like, just kind of like really roundabout knowing my friend would know what I was talking about, even though they didn't play, you know, they refer to it as world of war crack. Uh, but <laughs> Still does. Um, but when their friend was like, oh, she got this look on her face, like, and we were giving this each other this kind of like side eye look, like, wait a minute. And I'm like, and I was like, Quarter Alliance. And she's like, I play both, but mostly, mostly Alliance. And I was like, which, which realm? <laughs> and B is why I'm on Ice Crown right now. Um, because at that time, to go into this really, 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 really... I'm not the only one to have this experience, so I'm not expecting any sort of pity or sympathy for it, but uh, I was in a guild. Still in that guild, actually, but now I own it because everyone else abandoned it. Um... And it, it started out a great guild. They found me lost in a barrow den in Darnassus really early on. And they helped me out and then they invited me and I, you know, I stayed in there and then I was on a uh, uh, Draenor. Uh, that's the realm I was on originally. And everyone kind of left and moved on with their lives. Uh, I think it may have been part of the Siege of Ogrimmar, like, Exodus. Yeah, it, it, it us as well. I was like, wait a minute. That cut yeah. You're you're the second time that happened. It's like we knew each other for a couple of years at least. Before I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, it was like quarter and then I actually I asked quarter alliance because it actually doesn't matter to me, but I try to see if it matters to the person I'm talking to. Because I play both. Um, and then I know, like, if they're suddenly like, "Horde," and I'm like, "Okay, I guess we won't play together then." Um, but that's never happened because you're lovely, and um, and uh, my friend's friend is lovely. I I haven't spoken to her in, in ages, but she's still on my friend list on on here. But I had a problem with that with the old guild of. There was one person left who used to disappear and come back. And at one point he, he had disappeared for a long enough time for the guild to basically, I was the only person left. So I became the owner of the guild. It's like, cool. Okay. Whatever. But he, he used to, all oh, he, he is exactly the type of toxic player. People hate <laughs> is the best way to describe him with a little bit additional danger involved. So mostly like when we were raiding or whatever, it didn't matter it, you know, when the whole guild was still there. It wasn't as much of an issue. Um, but what started to happen was he'd come back every you know, few months or so and then be, you know, invite me to go into a raid or something and then he'd piss them all out, get kicked off, and then I was kind of left there like... Okay, I don't approve of that either, guys. If we want to finish this up, it's okay. But if you don't feel comfortable, like, oh, no, no, you seem, you're fine. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, we were on vent at that point. Um, so it was all spoken nasty. Like, it wasn't typed out 
aggro, angry shit. It was, he was yelling and cursing people out. Um, it was on oh, Courage. Uh, really? It's like, we were just doing it for, for no reason. It was kind of to, like, grind and do stuff. Um, but eventually he disappeared for a long time. That's when I inherited the guild. So I, I had the guild and at one time I was on and he was like, he's like, hey, um, I forget if this was, no, yeah, it was before. And he's like, guess where I've been? And my brain immediately said jail. <laughs> like my brain said it. Your ass has been in. Your ass has been in jail. And I was like, "What jail?" He's like, "Yeah, how did you know?" And then he proceeded to tell me about uh, this woman he was involved with, and talked about her extremely negatively, and how she set him up. And I'm like, "Wow, wow, that's like a whole sea. That's that's like that's that's a whole sea of red flags of like." distance yourself from this this creep immediately because he was trying to get sympathy and i'm like i said and all i could all i could do is like look i don't I, I don't know you very well i don't know her very well i can't really have an opinion on this you know um and then after that is when i met my friend's friend who plays well and then i'm like what server you want because i need to jump servers i said i'm not looking forward to bringing all my characters over but i need to jump servers and i need to bring a guild over as well because i didn't want to lose my guild bank principle of the thing. It was very expensive to do this. But she had recommended Ice Crown. She said, it's, it's a busy server. She's like, but I enjoy it. It, it seems to be pretty okay. And I was like, okay. So I jumped to Ice Crown. Um, and then that guy found me again, at which point I told him, sorry, this is now a family guild. <laughs> He's like, oh, you told me I could join. I'm like, no, I didn't. Because this is a family guild. I have, and at that point, I was. I said I had my two young nephews, and they were two young nephews. They're they're, they're adults now. <laughs> oh, it's so long. Um, and uh, I haven't heard from him since. He hasn't tried to contact. Me. I did block him. No, I did block him after that. And I was like, oh no 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 no. I don't need your really not great ass around me ever. Um, uh, I'm. Just, he's one of those people that I just assume opened his mouth to the wrong person at some point and probably got himself killed or like, I don't know, became president. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's my story. I ended up on ice cream. Now, where was I? I was talking about BlizzCon. BlizzCon is not filled like with people like him. And, um, it was filled with actually very, I mean, you had your Jew bros and you had your, and I don't like this term, but it's shorthand. Uh, pick me girls is what is referred to by the youth on the internets. Um, you know, it's I, I, like, I'm like, if you've got it and you can make money off it and make money off of the gullibility of men who just want to see boobies, go for it. Um, but it's it, to say that they're part of like, they're the, a huge part of the community. They're not, they're, 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 they're a significant portion of streamers because it's a, an appearance based economy and entertainment there's a you know i'm not saying that's the reason i'm not streaming is because i don't look i'm like because because i'm a middle-aged woman in these united states and it doesn't take much for someone to just say nasty shit and they'll say nasty shit they'll be i don't like your voice <laughs> i'm gonna click dislike um so it doesn't take much really uh so i just stay off camera it's just easier and also i'm tired i'm not gonna get dressed up for the stream so where was i Yes, I had notes. I made I had bullet points and everything, and I've already already reviewed off them. Um, the crowd was actually a lot more diverse in general than I thought it would be. Uh, like I was expecting lots of like twenty to thirty year old white dudes with questionable beards. A lot of them with beards that make me say, "You refer to it as the uh, War of Northern Aggression, don't you?" Beards, um, <laughs> like. <laughs> like those folks um but uh honestly i it was it was such a diverse great and crowd that it was of just and everyone there was like and like the first day people kind of a little tentative my second day people were like these are my people 
Um, and it, it just kind of had that vibe, even though I barely talked to anyone. Um, everyone who talked to me or came up to me was cool. Uh, and at, at one point, I ended up inadvertently talking to someone from Blizzard without realizing it. I mean, people had like the BlizzCon shirts and the Blizzard shirts. I thought they were either like hired or volunteers because they had volunteers and you know I didn't think there was anyone that was like yes I work with the I work directly with the author of these books person talking to me and I'm not, I don't have a name I'm not trying to remember the name I'm not even going to describe her but um I was just holding the Exploring Azeroth Pandaria book because that you know I was getting that signed and she started talking to me about it and how she wished that the author could come over, that she had been working with them for many years. And I'm like, and I was, oh, I'm already in this conversation. <laughs> Oops, I'm already in this conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just started going with it and I was talking about it. I was like, I said, well, if I'm going to be honest, like, you know, my involvement in at least the Warcraft universe is Warcraft 2. Um, and she's like, oh, I'm like, yeah. I was like, but I didn't actually get to get into WoW until Wrath because my computer couldn't run it. I was like, so, but I played the hell out of, you know, Warcraft 2. Um, and then 3 when it came out because my computer could run that. It just couldn't run WoW. Um, clearly, that's not the problem right now. I forgot to change my spec. I'll change it later. So, actually, maybe I'll just change it now while I'm talking still. So, what we were talking about, and she's like, she just volunteers and I'm not, this is not a big, huge secret or anything. This is, it, I'm, I'm not trying to get anyone in trouble. I got, I would never want to. She didn't give away any secrets, but it was more her enthusiasm. But she says next year is going, she's like next year. Oh, next year. And I was like, and I'm like, don't tell me anything. You're going to get yourself in trouble. I was like, I was like, I'm imagining with two anniversaries, that being the 20th anniversary of wow. And the 20th, the 30th anniversary of the first Warcraft game, I think, or, or Blizzard. I may be mixing that up. It's like, I'm going to do two big anniversaries. It's going to be huge. She's like, oh, I can't say anything. I'm like, I don't have to. I'm planning on coming anyway. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to sell it to me. I'm going to be here. She's like, she's like, yeah, but oh, like, don't get yourself in trouble. She's like, okay. But it was just like a really funny, fun conversation. And I, uh, I, I'm going to say, um, where's my poison? Here it is. So I am going to just say that uh, definitely um, if you're thinking about going next year, why is my, why is my poison not working? Are you kidding me? Why is my poison? Why is it not working? Oh! I know why it's not working. <laughs> no, it's not it. That's <laughs> why. What they did! Look what they did! I opened this up before in another character and I was like, No! It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm actually going to. I'm not going to keep this build. I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill all my builds. That was a nice Evans build. I, I don't know why I kept that. This was Sepsis build. I'm not doing Sepsis build. I'm actually doing. I hope it's still on my clipboard. Yes. If you're wondering what I'm calling it, so I remember where the hell I got it from, which is Wowhead. Um, A is for assassin. Um, uh, boot, 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 raid. This is a raid build, and it's dance. There, it's a shadow dance build. Now, there's only two things it basically swaps out for me. Um, sepsis is now gone. Echoing Reprimand is gone. That gets replaced with... I 
any shadow dance I've put here before. Shadow dance and set which replaces what sepsis would do. Are roughly what sepsis would do. And where's King's Bane? Where the hell is my King's Bane? I know it's here somewhere. Uh or is it under it's under assassination? King's Bane King's Bane is now where Echoing Reflect used to be. So that's my new build, which is not much different than before, thankfully. Um, so I just have to kind of work on the order. Now I should click my macro and my poison should go on normally. So I mean, in conclusion of the con itself, um, aside from the recommendation from someone from Blizz being like, oh my god, next year! Um, why do I only have two poisons? Did I lose the ability to have four poisons on my- oh my god. No, I liked having four poisons. Now what the hell am I gonna do? Alright, give me a second. I have to research something now. <laughs> um... After, because it's one thing when I was able to put four poisons on, I know I had a macro to do it for me. Now I'm stuck with, I don't know what to do with my poisons. What poisons do I got now these days? One of my poisons. No, wait, a trophic's there, but I guess I can't have four on. Damn it. All right, so what poisons do I need on? Need. Um, hmm. sorry about this. I thought I didn't realize they screwed with my poisons. Um, I mean, I'm assassination rogue. I'm all about the poisons. Rogue. This poison is assassination rogue. Not for Red the Lich King. Um. Okay, so the icy veins, these usually they're they're usually the same. They do have some things that are different. Um, uh, uh, poisons, deadly poisons, and amplifying poison. Deadly poison, amplifying poison. Oh, so okay, right, I already have that. Um, amplifying. But I apparently can't put a trophic on. Yeah. My macro just didn't work. Why? Why didn't my macro work? One. Amplifying poison. Amplifying poison. Amplifying poison. My macro broke. My macro. But fun! What fun! I swear, I will start playing at any moment. Um, so yeah, my uh, yeah, cast sequence, deadly poison, amplifying poison, crippling poison, atrophic poison. Amplifying poison, amplifying poison, and just with amplifying poison. Why? Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. I don't know why it broke my macro, but I'll figure it out. I just rather have one button and press it four times than have to do this, which I now have to do. Poison. 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 All right. Anyway. At least I still have four poisons. That makes me happy. So four poisons, I'm even going to use one of these. Um... So my opinion on BlizzCon is it, it's it's a really great experience. It's not a cheap experience. Um, you know, it's a really great experience to kind of get out there and just, you know, see folks not in, you know, online and how they interact online. Oh, Bivdevo. 
that girl is poison. Um, it's driving me out of my. Look what you got me doing live in front of people. <laughs> That's why it's hard for me to find. Um, can't get scared. I love that song. Sharing is scary. Now that's in my head. I'm gonna, I will have that now in my uh, in my head every time I poison up my blades. So yeah, my rec my recommendations: if you can go to BlizzCon, go to BlizzCon. Um, if you can't, I mean, it's not cheap. It's not cheap to fly out there unless you're like living nearby. Um, it's not the most expensive conference I've been to, but your job here is fun. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'd say go see, like, actual players and fans together in person uh, rather than the, you know, rage clowns online just tearing it down at every opportunity to get, you know, clicks, likes, subscribes, and sponsorships. It's, it's, it's just, it's great to kind of be in that atmosphere. Um, about the new expansion, uh, I, I'm never going to get to play this, this catch if I start talking about my thoughts and ideas about that, but the new expansions, um, I was, I was stoked. Uh, I have to say, I'm like, yay, we are going to be doing the things that I was hoping we were going to be doing. Um, so <laughs> not necessarily the order I thought we'd be doing them in, but we are going to be doing them. My theory that it could have been Elisande Eridicron was working with was wrong. So we are probably going to see Elisande uh, with the rebuilding of tier stuff, which we're supposed to be doing in this patch. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, the, this expansion's over already. It's like, no, no, no. They were pretty clear that the 12.5, the possibly 12.7 patches are still going to have a ton of story. And they seemed very, very excited about the fact that Quelth Alas. That's pretty close. I think that is right. Um... But that there's going to be a ton of story there because now it's going to lead into the war within. Um, and yeah, it's. I, I, I see that happening. I'm excited. There's so much story that just in here has to be resolved. I mean, I got this damn book Rathian gave me. What the fuck is happening with. What the, where is it? It's still in my inventory. I've still got a lot of shit. Um, here, I've still got this damn book. Is it going to just sit in my inventory forever? <laughs> Unsolved. Um, but speaking of, other than how gullible am I and Blizz really doesn't have to do anything to make me buy shit. Um, let's just, let's just, uh, just bring the little fucker out. Um, but it has a hat, mom. I am such an easy mark. Oh, did I? I lost a viewer. What's the like reference? That's the case you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> Ow. But it has a hat, Mom! I was like... All right, I probably can get Cataclysmic anyway, and it does amount to, but I will pay thirty bucks for a fucking pet. It's got the hat. I think they could have put the earrings on underneath it, but you know, I'll take it. Um, he's he's in the Cataclysmic, uh, um, the pack before the one that's way too expensive that I'm not paying for. Uh, but there is a uh, an extra pack. It's a pre-purchase uh, for the Cataclassic. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, Liz, we, we have to have a talk about this. <laughs> Clearly! If you're noticing, my backpack blades. Um, I have a bias. A little bit, a little bit of a bias. I was like, you did not make a effing Rathian pet, Lil Rathian, with the hat. 
just a bit, just a little bit. You know I'm getting that statue. You know I'm getting that statue. It's my birthday present. Um, so, <laughs> which is more than a year away. Almost less, slightly less than a year away, rather. Um, oh my God, it speaks. Oh my God, it speaks. It speaks. It speaks. I didn't even know it did that. It's going to be quoting lines. It's... And I hear it in the voice. <laughs> it speaks. Oh my god. Okay. Um, this, this is worth every effing goddamn penny I sent to this sent to blizzard for this this he doesn't do any of you click on him just makes well noises that's all um and does little spins every once in a while and apparently says things like deathwing's minion should be afraid of me um oh my god I'm so easily amused. Okay. Where was I before I got distracted? Um, uh, um, I'm gonna turn away from it. So, so, um, shit. What was I talking about? Can you tell me what I was talking about? I was gonna talk about, oh, yes. So speaking of the, the certain dragons, um, and it's, of course, a thing uh, that is from Pandaria and is no longer accessible in game. But uh, Novel has actually posted a video recently about the upcoming expansions, which he does because he's Novel. Go back into Pandaria to the scene of Werathian stripping balls um, after eating the, uh, the heart. And says, we have to rebuild the last titan. What did he just say now? As I grew within my... Oh, yep. <laughs> Haunting and scheming, I was born to be prisoner in all but name. This is what he says to you as a rogue. If you're doing things to the father. This is dialogue from that. And I, I'm not going to say... He's not saying that because I'm a rogue. But I could tell you that I took him out earlier on my shaman. He didn't say any of this shit. Okay, just want to say that. Um, so, I'm going to keep an eye on that because if it's a rogue only thing, <laughs> that's kind of cool. But anyway, what are they saying? So, anyway, at the scene, he's tripping balls in Pandaria, with the, where what he's saying doesn't come from. Um, he says, We have to rebuild the final type. It's one of the last things he says, and then he says, I can't remember anything. No one does. And I'm like, I was standing right here. I remember exactly what you said. So if you watch one of uh, Nubble's latest videos where he goes into uh, the three expansions, it's particularly, the, you know, says he's rather referred to the final type. Um, so just interesting. And it, it just makes you wonder how things are going to tie in. But again, well, yeah, if you're going to eat the heart of, it's not that it was the heart of an old god. It was, um, it was Le Shen's heart, but it was, I believe, Ra Den's heart. Um, so Ra, Ra's heart, the, um, but whatever the Titan's heart, Titan Keeper's heart. Think so. I'm going to have to check that again. Anyway, whatever heart he ate, he was able to tap into all that shit. Well, Le Shen was technically, he was the Thunder King, but he was technically a god in, in many senses. So, point still stands. So yeah, no, it was like Titan-infused Mogu, nearly godlike creature. Um, that he nom nommed down and uh, yeah, to go around. And... <laughs> the scene is great. Um, I recommend um looking at Nubble's video because he has it in there because it shows the whole scene, including Anduin going. You're not gonna eat that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Um, and you're just like, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a blue sucker. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I keep helping him. Um, so, so yeah, uh, he does the, the, the words, the final type comes out. He does say that it's said, but whether or not they're going to make those connections in the game, I don't know. Um, only because no one else can access that scene anymore in, at all. They can't access it. It's no longer in the game. It's part of it's part of the legendary quests, um, cloak quest. I, mean. I think, I, as far as I know, you can't even kick off anything having to do with that quest line. What would be interesting, and this I'm just throwing out there, um, is in if there's a Miss of Pandaria classic, if they bring it back. The one thing that I don't know about the Cataclysm classic is if they're bringing back. Um, Terra goes to staff and begs the father for it. Because, you know, I don't know if they're bringing those legendaries back. But I don't know if they brought back Sulfurus for Molten Core. So that's the, the hammer. Um, <laughs> he does say that. I forget where he says that. A mind's a terrible thing to waste. Where does he say that? Oh my god, it's going to be talking to me. Great. This is going to be super funny later on. Um, I told you, I got a sneak peek of what, what's what I'm doing next. Um, you think scary things are? Yeah, don't, that's not a good choice. So anyway. Oh no, did he make a bad decision? <laughs> not one of those. Okay, this is now the best the best pet ever. Um, yeah. Until the next best one comes along, but I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the money I, I spent on this. Oh my god. Anyway. So, um Yeah, I mean I can sit here and and, and cover your eyes, Rathian. <laughs> Talk about Anduin. <laughs> um and how uh devastated I was uh watching how he is now and how how he hasn't really processed everything that's happened. Um, and it broke my heart. And I was, I was really, I was really PTSD Mandarin. Yeah. I was, I was affected. I was affected. You know, I, I, I knew he needed, he said he was going off and he would need time. I, I was kind of hoping he wasn't quite as broken when he I knew he'd come back I didn't know how soon he'd come back but I was kind of hoping he'd be a little bit more along the way to fixed um and he wasn't he wasn't he's he's not in good shape and to be honest um I'm hoping like Thrall showing up didn't just instantly cure him because that's not how PS PTSD works. And a there's been a lot of folks I've seen commentary online, but online is online. But a lot of folks, some of them were some of them were reliable sources, uh, or at least some of them were worth trusting their opinion on. Um, that said, it was a pretty really damn good accurate representation. And and you know PTSD is not going to be cured by uh, Green Jesus showing up. <laughs> Even if he does sound suspiciously like your father. Because <laughs> they're both most messy. Um, if you didn't know. So, which is really funny when there's a scene where he does flash back to uh, Varian putting his hand on his shoulder. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. wait. If you remember for a moment that they're both Chris Messi. <laughs> slightly disorienting. So, so yeah, uh, it's a... Uh, I mean, I don't see him not finding the light. I Anduin just... He's just... It's a fantasy universe, and what happened to him is definitely, you know, grounded in, in fantasy-type levels of trauma. But it's still, like... Yeah. No. And the crisis of faith, which he was very much very sure of. 
you know, he had no doubts there at all. Right from the, the start of Sh now, not Shadowlands all you like, but they make it very clear at the very start. He uses the light to save your ass. Um, so you can escape. And, you know, he's able to call it even in the mall, which is, you know, that's remarked upon. It makes him a more compelling character. I mean, he, he had a point where it broke. I mean, and this is the thing. I mean, it goes even further back than that, you know. Um, Anduin was always the one trying to broker peace. He was making peace at the other side way back in Pandaria. Um, you know, that's when, you know, the Torrent warmed up to him. Um, it, right, he's, he's got, de like, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, and that's not overlooking everything else that's happened, too. I mean, what happened to him, you know, in Shadowlands is the worst that's happened to him. Um... But, you know, he, he's still a kid when he ascends to the throne because his dad got killed and is immediately thrust into a war, which is the one thing he you didn't do. To steal from my <laughs> hey, Farrakh, how you doing? I am coming I'm for you, you, little worms. Hi, man, Arasur. You're gonna kick my butt so much this this patch. Um, so you feel so bad that everyone's ganging up on Matt Mercer for a read. I was like, no, don't gang up on Matt Mercer. Um, yeah, it's like, and Jaina was the one who was advocating for peace all the time too. Into fucking Theramore. Oh, that was Garrosh. <laughs> um, but, oh, oh my but yeah I mean it's he you know and Anduin kind of like you know it, if you, you make connections with, with characters from fictional universes as I do he's getting tired um, you know if you've played the long, game long enough you know, you know, you know Anduin. You know, he's a little kid. Your character most likely was an adult. You started as an adult. You can't not be an adult in the game. So you knew him as like a little kid and you got to watch him grow up. In real time, almost. Barring weird time frames and time skips. And, you know, you got to see him grow up in real time. And experience, experience these things, and you knew he went, he went literal hell. We all went through hell, shadowless. But he went through. He was turned into the worst thing he could ever be thought he could be turned into. And though that whole scene with Sylvanas at the end of like, I think I enjoyed it. You know, uh, the power that he had, which, yeah, I mean, it that's. That's got to fuck with him because he thought he was something that, you know, and whether it's foolish to believe that he was immune to that, you know, again, he's not that old. Um, he wasn't then, certainly. There's been that, there's been a five, there's been a, well, five year time skip. It's three years time skip. Um, we've been in, by that time, it's going to be, he'll be in his 20s, but still, I guess. But even so, it's a lot. He's gone through a lot, and I feel for the kid. And I'm just like, fuck for the horde for the alliance for Azra. I'm doing this for Anduin. Hashtag for Anduin. You know? Got to, oh, Grant, you gotta rescue his ass again in a way. Well, not really. He's he's there. He's he's holding it up. But you know, I'm just like, I, I got you back, kid. <laughs> I think. What the hell are you on about? Oh, he's still talking about mines are a terrible thing to taste. Why do you keep repeating that? Oh, terrible thing to waste. I said taste. That is a ministry album from the early 1990s. A mine is a terrible thing to taste. And I'm kind of in my brain flipping it because of um, him eating hearts. He did not eat a brain. He ate a heart. Let's get that right, people. All right. So I had a lot of feels about the cinematic. Um... I've been having fun watching other people's reactions to the cinematic. 
Uh, I was crying. I was sitting there in in the stadium, state arena or whatever, crying because uh, I was like, "Oh my god, he's not well." Um, and then all the rest happens, and I'm like, "Oh." But he has said that now five times in a row. Yo, you're stuck on a loop. Say something else. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, their lore was rough. Um, I, I, I forget if that, that wasn't a pre-patch. That was actually part of the expansion, but I forget where it was. But I can remember doing that quest line. I did it a couple of times because I did it both sides. But Theramore was, was rough. And it didn't help to go and do that on the Blue Dragon quest line either. By the way, spoilers, if we haven't done the Blue Dragon quest line, first of all, do it. Because it's amazing. Two, um, it follows up. Um, it goes into it again. And it, it's heartbreaking again. That whole freaking Blue Dragon quest line is freaking devastating. This damn game is trying to kill me. So anyway, I do have one, one final... Ah, he does that. <laughs> that is, um, that's his annoyed language. You click on it enough time, he says, you do not want to make it onto my list. That's what he's sending you if you're a rogue out to murder the rest of his flight. <laughs> um, he'll say it in that, around that. But yeah, um, So, um, the last thing I'm going to say is the cinematic itself is not, you know, whatever actions in there is, is not like, you know, it's no Michael Bay explosions, the type of thing people who say, you know, it's so boring, cinematic is so boring, um, they want to see, I guess, explosions and action and fight scenes and whatever. Um, it's not that. It's definitely emotional. But my favorite part about it wasn't even just the cinematic itself. It was Chris Metzen, who several people are like, he's going to save WoW from wokeness or whatever the fuck is going on in their heads. I don't know. I don't. I try not to get too much into that logic or try to understand it. But. Um, and he comes in and basically says it's the, it's the little heartfelt moments or the small heartfelt moments where things begin. And the focus is on the focus on these three expansions is the story. So prioritizing story, prioritizing quiet emotional moments, and then shows that cinematic. And I was like. I, I'm making a face that unfortunately I will not show on camera, but the face is like I'm not worried anymore. <laughs> I'm not worried that they're go that the message learned was, oh no, we can't have these small emotional stories anymore. No, that scares off our player base. Nope. That's not what's happening. Um Yeah, so it's to see the focus on no, we're going to deal with, you know, you, you had a problem with us dealing with people having emotions in the game. Well, guess what? Here's how Anduin's doing. <laughs> All right. So, so let's take, uh, let's go into the... What are we doing? We're going to find Marithra. All right, let's find Marithra.